You guys good this morning? It's a beautiful day outside. I suppose it's hot out there since they canceled the... So it's nice to be in the cool, cool of the day inside here. He's here, guys. Father's here. He wants to touch you guys this morning. Just be ready. Be open for him. Father, we just come to you this morning. We glorify you this morning. We praise your holy name. God, you're worthy of more than we can offer. But God, we offer up what we can. We just give it to you right now. Lord, we humble ourselves before you. Just thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for that restful place that you've created in your heart for each one of us to just sit and talk to you and you talk to us. We just praise you for that. We love you, Lord. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Do we have any CIA agents in here this morning? If you were, you probably wouldn't raise your hand. So if you raise your hand, I know you're not. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> you cannot be exposed. I am grateful to be here this morning. And I, have, I just want to talk a minute before I get to the word or before I get to the scripture. We're going to turn to Matthew chapter 6 and uh, here in a minute. But I love everything to do with spy. I love everything to do with um, law enforcement. I love everything to do with hunting people down and finding them. And, and um, just... I just love that. I love protecting people. I just, that's part, it's built in me. And I am, um, and I'm, I'm grateful today that I, that I can say I've, I've, I've been privileged to be able to capture 218 people in a two-year period. That during this time, I had to act as a double agent several different times. And I don't know if you know what that means, that you would, you would infiltrate into another area and you would share information or you would try to get information to get someone to do something or get them to say something that you needed them to say to incriminate them or whatever. And so when I did bounty hunting, private investigation, and um, law enforcement, I had to do all those. And sometimes I felt horrible inside because I felt like I had to lie in a sense to, to get the information that I needed from these people. So that kind of weighed on me at different times, you know, that I had to lie. But, um, but I went into my, um, is that mic off? Let me take these monitors down all the way. And um, so that would weigh on me and, um, at different times, but I still had to do what I had to do. Why? Because I was hired to do a job. And I had to go in and infiltrate and be that double agent. You know, and I remember there was times that I would, um, I would be into a situation, a place, and I know there was one particular time where this, this gentleman, I was investigating this gentleman, he was doing insurance fraud, and he was collecting all this insurance money because his foot didn't work right. But I went to this concert that he was putting on, and he was the lead guy of this concert, a rap concert, and he was the lead guy, and... And I met his parents, and I got to talk with him and his parents. And, you know, and I just act like I'm just some Joe out in the, in the, in the crowd. But, and then he started jumping up and down and just hooting and hollering. And during this whole time, and I thought, man, I've got so much evidence against this guy that he's not hurting. And he's collected all this money. And a part of me, the double agent in me, wanted to go, hey, man, I'm like working for these people. You, you should probably tone it down a little bit on the foot jumping. And so because of that was my heart. I didn't want him to get in trouble, but I know who I am and, and, and I know whose I am and, and I have to do the right thing. And I had to turn him in. I had to, and it wasn't about money. It was about doing what was right. It was about that double agent enemy that had to go, I got to choose one way or another way. I got I to figure out which way I'm going to go, right or left what I'm going to do in this situation. And there was times I would hide out and I would play both, all of my different um, professions and I would hide out and I would act like I was a um, bounty hunter, but I was actually a private investigator in that moment. And I, would, and I would go up to the person I was actually watching and, and tell them that I was looking for someone down the road and if I could sit at their house and watch. Then I would sit at their house and watch and watch all the stuff they wasn't allowed to do. And so I played both those parts to be a double agent. And, and I've had it played on me before. I've had people play that thing on me before. And um, 
So we have to be careful. We have to watch out for, for um, it could be dangerous to play a double part. It could be dangerous to play two different sides. And a lot of people in the Christian world today are doing just that. They're playing both sides. They're trying to have the best of both worlds. And the Father says in His Word, in Matthew 6, 24, He says that no one can serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. You either serve one or the other. It talks about you either hate the one and love the other or despise the one. And Shelly, if you have that, um, can, I, can I have that baseball right there? I'm going to do a little bit of a um, things. Nate, you come up here. I'm going to play. I'm going to play the good guy. Nate's going to play the bad guy. <laughs> Bailey, will you be our in-between guy, girl? Bailey, you're going to. So what we're going to do, and I hope this don't ring. So what we're going to do is. Um, you ever heard that game in the middle, like in, in the middle? Uh, Nate said it's called monkey in the middle. I, we always called it in between. Is that our respectful generation called it in between, and then they then they called it monkey in the middle. So they started giving name calling to the one in the middle. But um, but that's what it is when we when we are being a double agent. We get caught in the middle. Of trying to satisfy both sides and you know you have the enemy that's out there the enemy is trying to do whatever he wants to do and he's trying to ask questions or he's trying to get the person in the middle to come to and to get the ball so Bailey the, you know the object of this game is you got to go get that ball from him but Nate might ask a question and I might on the good side ask this same question you got to be enthusiastic about this you're not bored just yet. You will be bored here in a minute, but just yet. But run after that ball, get it. Because the enemy is over there trying to get you to come, and you're running after it. And the enemy's asking all kinds of questions. The enemy's asking all kinds of questions, but the Lord's over here saying, Come serve me, come serve me, come to my house, and I will give you good things. I will bring good things to you. But the enemy's asking all kinds of different questions. About lost that one. But I want you to serve me. And I don't know if it's a good scenario now that I'm playing them because Jesus wouldn't throw the ball back. He would bring you in. So. But the gist of the thing is, is that we can't serve. You can't serve two masters. You have to be, either be devoted to one or the other. And my hope is, is that you're devoted to the good. But if you're not, you'll get weary and you'll wear down. She's already wore out. You'll get weary. <laughs> You'll get weary, and I don't know whose ball this is, but um, you'll get weary and you'll wear down in the middle trying to serve two different masters, trying to please two different people. And the Bible says we cannot do that. We cannot be a servant of two different. We have to either serve one or the other. And you have to make the choice. He's given us a free will to choose. The battle's yours. But Jesus has given us everything that we need to Make him that one to serve. He's given us all the things. And he says in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17 and 18, he says this, Therefore come out from the midst, from their midst, and be separate. From whose midst? From the midst of the world, from the midst of the things that's pulling you down, keeping you away, keeping you away from God. Come away from those things and separate yourself and be separate, says the Lord. And do not touch what is unclean. Are you touching things that are unclean? He said, if you do this, then I will come to you and I will be your father to you. And you shall be sons and daughters to me. This is God speaking. He's so in love with you that he wants you to have a intimate relationship with him, but you have to separate yourself from the things of the world. You have to separate yourself from the things of the world that are keeping you down and keeping you in that inquisitive, I want to go this way or this way or this way or this way. And I was going to use Brother David this morning, and um, maybe one day they can do a skit about this with the, with the teens. But 
it's so, our world is in a situation right now where people are struggling and they're fighting because they don't know which way to go. They, because they got some Christians over here that are kind of maybe half-hearted Christians and they're, 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 they're kind of leading them toward um, doing what's right. But on the other hand, they're saying, well, you know, it's okay to do this. It's, it's okay to miss Sunday every now and then. It's okay to do this. We have to be careful because the Bible also said that there's sheep, wolves that are in sheep's clothing. It says that there are people in the church, there are pastors, leaders in the church that will try to pull you away. And they'll make it seem so good. They'll make it seem so right. But it's not. We have to get ourselves in a spot of choosing God or choosing the world. And we're coming down to the nitty-gritty of things that we're e we either choose one or the other. And, and I talked to leadership this morning, and, you know, I, I want to be really blunt about some things, but because of, because of some people are still drinking milk and they're still milking on the bottle, it's really hard to be really direct unless the Lord gives me that clarity to be direct. But there's some things I really want to be direct on because I'm leading you and God has put me in this position to lead you and I want you guys to do the right things and lean toward the right things. And, and I know that it's, that I know it's hard sometimes to make choices, to make right choices. It is. Even as a pastor, it's hard sometimes to make those right choices um, be, just because of my family, just different things that are going on in my family, in my family's life. You know, I got 12 grandkids and five sons, so you know, it's a lot to juggle there. A lot of different things I have to juggle and I have to make the right decision. And I have to weigh out and I have to think, okay, if I do this way, this is going to happen. But if I do it this way, this is going to happen. Or if I, do, if I go to this ball game, then these guys are going to be upset that I went to this ball game, didn't go to their ball game. So I, it's just so much to juggle. And I, at times it's just, it's, it's frustrating. I feel like that person in the middle and I just want to like sit down and say, I'm not going to any of them. I'm not doing anything. I want to be exactly where God wants me to be. I'm going to be right in the place that God called for me to be, that he's desired for me to be. I mean, how many of you get frustrated struggling these different battles in your heart? How many of you get frustrated struggling the different things where you've got things that you can do and you're like, man, should I do that? And then you've got other things that really... That you, that you want to do, but you think, should I do those things? Should I step into that or should I step over here? And I, I, I don't know how to um, articulate it in words, how it makes me feel. When I watch and see what people are doing. You know, when I watch people coming to church one day and then the next day they're they're not the next week they're not or they're I, I, I don't I don't know I just know how I live I know how I am e even when even when I was in a worldly church I still was there every every time the doors were open even when I was I was I was just there and I don't understand um, the world today and, 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 and all pastors are struggling with this because I don't understand the mindset or the concept of how other things I don't know if we realize what Jesus has done for us is what I'm trying to say I don't know because we're playing that double agent and I don't really think we know really what Jesus has done for us what he's done in our lives to change us to make us and create us to be the people that he's called us to be I don't think we've realized that when we make certain choices I believe that Sunday is one of the most important days of the week I believe it is a day that is for us to be together, to come together and to worship together and, and commune together and talk together and, and live life together. We don't get to do that outside of here always because we all have such a busy life. But this is the moment that God says, hey, I've get this day aside. I've set this day aside for you all to come together and to worship together and love on one another. So what are you putting your hands on? What are you touching on the Lord's day? I 
as Sheree was speaking this morning, and, and um, Sheree, that's so true, you know, what you were speaking this morning, you know, people, and I feel like what it's, it's almost, I, I got an image when you, when you had said that, it's almost like people get burnt out, and they, they stop short of being what they're called to be, because of not serving God like they're supposed to be. It would be almost like trying to melt a thing of gold that's got gold and it's got other things in it, but you're trying to melt the pure gold out of it and you stop short and you cut the fire short and it's just a blob of whatever. It's almost like that, you know, where people stop short and they don't get the full blessing of God because they don't want to serve the way that God's called them to serve. trying to hear from God this morning because I've seen so many people play the double agent. I've seen so many people play both sides. I've watched them come the life of love. Last week it seemed like it was totally full. Now I've watched them come to this place I've, and I've literally watched and Shelly and I talked the other day and we and we talk about the different people that have been in and out of the door. So then we talk to the ones that have walked away where they are now, what their lives look like now. We even looked a couple of them up on Facebook. It's like, okay, where are they at right now? Where are they, where are they at? And, and their lives are a total mess. There's been people that have come and got in the waters and they've gotten totally healed. Totally healed. Marriage is restored. Lives restored. And they've walked away, and now they're divorced. And now they're, they're back on drugs. They're back and doing a mess. Why? Because they've left that door open to that double agency. And they've left that door open to be that double agent. They've left the door open to where, where they could go back. They could go back to that place where they were. And what a dangerous place that is to be to where you're not totally 100% sold out to the Father. What a dangerous place that is to be where you're not totally sold out to what He has called for you to do, to do what He needs for you to do. Paul never wanted to get in that spot. Paul was used in so many ways for God. Remember, he was, he was a guy that was out there killing Christians. But God turned his life around. And then he's using him and he's in prison. Paul didn't count that as loss. He counted his gain because he's in a prison and he's ministering to the people he's in prison with. He's loving on them. He's using every situation, every scenario that he's in, he's using that scenario kind of like a double agent. Jesus was a double agent. He was serving God, his father, and he was serving humanity at the same time. So he, was, he played the good double agent. A lot of double agents are not good double agents, but Jesus was. And Paul was because he played that part. He went into the places that God called him to be. He's in a prison, and he preached to the people in the prison. He infiltrated the place that God had sent him in the place that he was. And to the point that he wanted to in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 says this. It says, um, because of the surprising greatness of revelations for this reason... To keep me from exalting myself, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Torment in that scripture right there, this is 2 Corinthians 12, 7. Torment in that scripture means to be beaten or to keep beating on, to keep hitting, to keep hurting, to keep pressing in to that person, to keep them down. And Paul didn't mind that someone in his life or whatever the thorn was, he didn't mind that because it kept him humble and it kept him in a place of servanthood knowing whose he was and who he was. So don't despise them when God gets you in a job and you're in a place and you feel like people are beating you down, tearing you apart. Don't despise those places that you're at because God can use you in those places. We have to look on the bright side as Randy just talks about the bright side, how God loves you and how powerful you are. When he puts you in a job or in a position, you have to use that place that God's put you. If that's where you're supposed to be, minister 
minister in that place to the people. Be that double agent for Jesus. Do the job you're hired to do, but also do the job that God has called you to do in that time and that season. We must remember that we are weak and He is strong. You guys remember that song, that little song? I don't think the kids sing it anymore. Anybody know it? Can you guys sing it? You know it? Jesus. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Do the kids sing that anymore? Maybe they should. Maybe they should realize that, that he is strong and they're weak. And in their circumstance, in their circumstance, to know that God will get them through, even though they're weak and even though it don't, it don't look like they might get through that spot. Jesus is the one that will make them get to a different place. We have to choose what side we're going to be on. Remember when Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, he said to choose this day. What way are you going to be? What side are you going to be on? You're either going to serve the prophets of Baal or you're going to serve God. You're either going to serve your God or you're going to serve the true God. And he sent fire down. They called fire to come down because they couldn't do what, God, what their God asked them to do or what they were asking of their God. He wouldn't do it. So what did they do? They called, uh, Elisha called fire down. And they had to make a choice that day who they were going to serve. Who they were going to serve. We have to make that same choice. We have two options. Either we serve him or we serve the world. And I don't know where you guys are today. I don't know what all of your situations are. I don't know what your life situations are. I just know that we are a people called to do the greater things in this world. We're people called to do what's right. We're people called to do what God has asked us to do. And I think that I feel like today, I just feel like today I'm really struggling in getting this message out to you because I've been conflicted in my heart on how to, um, to give it to you without offending anyone. And so that's been weighing on my mind and weighing on my heart this morning. But I want to ask a question. I, I, I'm going I'm to just veer clear off of where, I, where my notes are. I'm going to ask a question. What are we doing? I mean, I mean... What is this all about? What is church all about? What is coming together all about? Why should we get together on Sunday? Why is it important that we teach our children how valuable Sunday is, how valuable this day is? Why is it so important that we do that? I mean, guys, we've lost a whole generation. And we're trying to make up and redeem that place, that generation that we lost. If you watch the news and you see the news, it's that generation that we've lost that are out in the streets screaming and burning things up and doing things they're not supposed to do. Why? Because they don't know who God is. Why? Because we have not showed them who God is by living it before them. We've said with our mouth things that we want to say to make ourselves look good, but we haven't displayed to them what really they need to see, and that's Jesus in us. Because they have not seen it. Because if they would have seen it, they would not be in a place that they're at. We wouldn't have this generation of youth that are fighting for abortion. We wouldn't have on, on the D, during the DNC, we wouldn't have a, a trailer out there that did 25 abortions that day. 
We wouldn't have stuff like that if our children knew who God was and they're going to know through us. We have to be the lead to show them who He is. We have to make that change. And so I'm saying we have to divide. What are we, what are we going to choose? Are we going to choose Him or are we going to choose the world? What is in the world? All the things in the world. I'm talking about everything the world has to offer. Who are we going to choose? I'm frustrated when I see the people of the world and I see them out there and I, I want to help them. I want to reach them. I want to touch them. But they, it seems like some of them are so untouchable because they're set in their ways. When I go out in the streets and I minister to people in the streets, they're carrying these bags on the street. I do it all the time. They're into this new age stuff and they, they won't wave from it. They won't move from it. They think that there's just, it's just all fun and fun and we're all just going to go and be in heaven. We're all just going to have a good time or be wherever and have a good time. That's not true. We have to be the ones that go out and sit. We have to be those in, that infiltration people, that the CIA people, or the the people that that are double agents. And we work for Father, and we go into these places, and we reach these people, Amen. and we touch them. We have to know that Sunday is so important that we can come back and regroup together to to build up to go back out into the highways and byways. And I and I will say this. Because I want to I want to be fair because of what I'm saying. I don't think listen, I'm I'm probably gonna get in trouble. I don't think we should have any ball games on Sunday. I'm just gonna say it. I don't think that we should have anything on Sunday that's gonna take our children away from God. But on the flip side of that, because I have to be fair with what I'm saying, if you are doing that. For the love of God, teach these children the value of who Jesus is. And try to somehow, when you're infiltrating that baseball game or the softball games or all these things, when you're trying to infiltrate that, be the double agent, try to get it shifted back to where it was when I was a kid. When there was no games on Sunday, there was nothing else going on on Sunday except for people going to church. There was nothing open. There were no bars open. There was no stores open. There was nothing open. People were going to church or staying at home. Kids hardly even went out to play on Sunday during a certain time because it was irreverent. There's something that was just reverent about that day and that time. So I'm saying if you are doing stuff on a Sunday and you feel like you're called to do that, change the calling. Change what it is. When you go and you play ball, and I know you do, and I love that you're teaching the kids about God. But when you're out there, man, figure out a way to say, hey, guys, can we do this on another day? Can we do this on a Saturday? Can we do this on a Friday? Hey, Parents shifted around. My, my family, my kids are so engulfed and running around. They're going crazy just taking their kids to everything. They can't even keep a schedule clear. Taking the kids. We can't even build a youth group here because the youth are busier than we are. Because we got them caught up in so many things. They got to go to this league and then to this league. When they get to this, hey, this is this season. This is this season. I mean, we have to come. We have to stop it sooner or later. We have to figure out sooner or later where we're going to draw the line at. We lost a generation. They're not irredeemable. They are redeemable. But what we have to do is we have to go out and we have to redeem them intentionally. We have to make it a point to go out. And in doing that, we have to make it a point to say, God, I want to redeem that today. I want to redeem Sunday for you. I want to give it back to you and give you back what was yours to begin with. Six days he created everything. On the seventh day he rested. And so I got that out. Are you guys mad at me? Um, again, you know, I mean, I'm grateful. I'm, I, listen, I'm grateful that all you are here today. I am so grateful and thank you for being here. But I want you guys to know, we have, we, listen, we have enough people coming in and out of these doors on a bi-weekly, tri-weekly basis these, all these chairs would be full if they were here. I mean, do you see a problem with that? I mean, do you, I mean, all these chairs would be full of people coming in, worshiping together, communing together, reading scripture together, talking together, loving and praying for each other. You, know, you come down here this morning and pray, and some people come up and pray with you. People, when we miss Sunday, we're missing out on one of the greatest days of the week, the opportunity that God has for us to minister.
Yeah. Well, I don't want to get in too much trouble today, so um, let's stand. If it's your first time, thank you for being here today. And um, I always want to be unoffendable myself. I want to be unoffendable. So whatever you say to me is not going to offend me because I know who I am and it's not going to move me. If it ain't going to move heaven, it ain't going to move me. And that's my attitude. I try to keep myself. So I hope this morning I didn't offend you in any way. Um, I, I hope that I said this out of love. I hope that um, I was in conflict in my mind. I really was in conflict in my mind because, I mean, I feel like that you guys should be able to say to me what you want to say to me. And I feel like I should be able to, I mean, I don't, you guys can come to me anytime and say whatever you want. Call me out on something, whatever you want. I don't care. Watch my life. I mean, follow me around and infiltrate my life and just say, well, you're doing this and you're doing that. You're probably not going to find much. I give you that free will to speak into my life. And I hope you give me the free will to speak into your life the same way. Because this is the only time we get to get together. This is the only time we get to come together and join together and, and, and love on one another like this. Because um, I don't think we do it outside these walls too much. We run across each other's paths every now and then, but we don't get to be like this all the time. I wish we could, I wish we could do this like every day. Just like have a cookout, picnic every day. We just all meet at a certain time. We just like come together and we could try to start that if you guys want. But just to be honest this morning, I just, I just, I just, I just am, uh, I've got a lot of things I want to say, but I, I feel like I have to ask the Lord if I can say them because um, some of it would be out of frustration and out of myself, and I don't want to do those things. And so, um, we just bow your heads for a moment. Father, you know this day. Father, you know everything about this day. You know every person that's here this morning. Father, I pray this morning that you would infiltrate their hearts. Lord, you would let them know that they are loved by you. God, let them know the value of coming together. Let them know the value of being together in, in your house. And what that means, Lord, to you. How that makes all heaven jump for joy. And I thank you, Father, that you've placed each one of us in individual jobs, individual lives, individual places, Lord, that we can reach and touch people. But I pray that, Jesus, our hearts are set on you, our hearts are sold out on you that we have chosen you and not the world. And we, even though we're in the world, Father, you say we're not of the world. So I pray right now that as we are in the world, not of the world, that we are salt, Lord, that, that just is savory to people, that they want to taste of it. Father, they want the good things of life. They want the good things that you have for them, Father. And I praise you this morning. Thank you, God, for this people, Lord. I pray that everyone, Lord, would go out and just... In, in, in the whole message this morning, the gist of it is they would choose who they're going to serve this day. They either choose you or choose Father, I just thank you, Lord. I praise you. Is there anyone here this morning that has a it's making that decision. Is there anyone here that's on the fence this morning that has juggled with getting all the way in? Like all the way in, sold out for him and not playing and trifling in the world, not trying to give the best of both worlds. Is there anybody here this morning that needs to pray? If you do just come up to the altar and I'll have someone come up. Just come up right there. Yeah. Anybody else?
I know there's a couple more, so I'm going to wait a few more minutes. Jesus waited on us for a long time. We're not totally sold out. Father, you know, go with them. Bless them. Be with them. Thank you guys for coming today. Thank you for being here today and just uh, hearing the message of today, the songs, the worship. Thank you guys for worshiping the inner in, entering into that. I bless you for the day and I just I say come back Wednesday. We have prayer on Wednesday. Come back Wednesday and um, pray with us. I feel like that's one of the greater times in my week besides Sunday that we get to pray together on Wednesdays and come together and just, um, it, it's, it's amazing. The presence of God is so thick and so tangible. So I just thank you guys. To, um, if you can clear your plate on Wednesdays, come. It's just for an hour. And be here with us. And worship with us. Praise Him. Just for a moment. You guys will just enter in and press in right here for prayer for these two. Thank you guys. If you leave, uh, we'll leave quietly and reverently so they can continue to pray. Bless you guys. Hope to see you Sunday, Wednesday. Water immersion. Tonight, water Could immersion. Could I announce real quick, whoever wants to help with the water immersion service, show up about 4.45. We'll set up real quick and we go into prayer about 5.15, 5.20. Thanks, guys.